right now. Right now. Exploring the multiverse of pop culture. This is Podcast Roll. An Adam and JP show. I'm your co-host, Jay Patrick. Hmm. There's Adam. <laughs> the NPR version? I'm going to do a full NPR version of Podcast Roll. Yeah. I will not speak above this level. Imagine that. Not much tone or fluctuation. Just speaking. Always up, finished with a down. I like your cadence. Oh. I enjoy it a great deal. Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow, this would be bad. <laughs> but what, what a fantastic joke if we could pull that yeah, off. Yeah, the whole time. It's, it's, it's kind of tough. It's hard to do. I agree. I still the old Trump breath. Like you inhale with your teeth clenched. <laughs> and, and then mispronounce the next word. <laughs> what we have to reach is, is herd. Uh, he was trying to say herd immunity. And he said herd uh, mentality. <laughs> It's going to be great when we reach herd mentality. I don't want to make it a political show every week, but it's it's part of pop culture now. We talked about it then. It's all we'll culture it now. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all you take away movies. Yeah, you take away new TV shows. <laughs> That's true. We're talking about movies that came out for, literally forty years ago. Here we you're, are. You're you're left with reruns of The Wall <laughs> or Holy Moly. Uh huh. Oh, Holy Moly is good. <laughs> Have you watched? I these? knew you'd be a Holy Moly fan. <laughs> When I saw that, I was like, hmm, "Yeah, that's right up Adam's alley." <laughs> Little Holy Moly. Uh, I've tried some Flora's Lava on Netflix. Have you tried that yet? No. Is it good? Nah, it's not as good as Holy Moly. What do you like on Netflix? What are you watching on Netflix these days? Um, Cobra Kai. I'm, is it on Netflix? Yeah, it, no, like like two weeks ago, it came on there. Really? Netflix uh, bought I'll it out. Check that out. Yeah. yeah, very well done. Very well done. Yeah. Do it. Do it right now. Go Brooke. Right, like right now. Yeah, yeah. Like like you, you're going to take over the show and just watch <laughs> yeah. Cobra Kai. Like I was shocked how, how how good it is. I thought you were watching that on YouTube. I did the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. Because I never had YouTube read. They had the first episode for free on just normal YouTube and I watched that. It seems like they could come up with a better name than YouTube Red. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah. Like, what does that even mean? Isn't Red bad? Nah, I mean, well. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, yes. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. Like in general, it's like on, on signs or a logo. It's kind of like whoa. It's just it's just a weird name for a streaming service. Yeah, YouTube Red. Yeah, it sounds kind of porny, doesn't it? It does sound dirty. Well, oh, a little porny. <laughs> just YouTube porn. Just call it that. YouTube. I'm <laughs> just straight to the, the the fact there. Uh, so we were gonna do <laughs> one thing in this episode. Just give the old audible. We decided not to. Swapped it out last minute. Now I'm prepared for nothing. Have you turned on your, your ghost radio this year? No. Is This isn't the ghost radio. Is it not? No. Wow. Yeah. This was, uh, this radio beside me, uh-huh. um, I have been around this radio since I was probably six years old. You sure that's not the ghost radio? It's not the ghost radio. It seems pretty ghosty. Yeah, I can bring out the ghost radio if you want. <laughs> this is good, I believe Well, you. we can try on this There's one. There's something about just old school radio that seems creepy to me. Right. I, like, I love it, but it seems creepy. About his Hang on. Oh. But something calming about it. Art? <laughs> Any art bill in this thing? This isn't the ghost radio. Not the ghost radio? Okay. Ooh. It's the ghost of Terry Clark. (laughs) No, nothing. We'll do the ghost radio next week. How about that? (laughs) This is just the annoying radio. Fantastic audio. (laughs) We start off with NPR and we go to this. You're hanging around eight minutes in. Congratulations. News Radio 840. <laughs> wow. We'll do the Ghost Radio next week. Okay. 
I have some great Adam's I ghost for you later dig on. Dig out the ghost radio. Where is it? Uh, it's in storage. Wow. Uh, catch me up to speed on your GI Joe collecting. Okay. Uh, what do you want to know? How many more figures do you have? Uh, kind of lost count. How deep in are you? I have a fresh in the car. I have a fresh in box bareness with a coil uh, motorcycle. Nice. Where'd you pick that up? Um, where did I pick that up? Target. A, f- a friend of a friend. Oh, for now. Oh, and so now we're dealing with dealers. <laughs> but I got it for retail plus shipping. So, See, so, so you have a Joe dealer. So fifty five bucks. That's what I got it for. Holy moly! Well, I mean the the bareness is forty. She's yeah. forty anyways, but then you have have some shipping on there. So, and I got the uh, we spoke out last week the uh, or two weeks ago the profit director Destro, yeah. the old pimp daddy Destro, pimp daddy Destro with his golden head and his chains and his uh, his his cape. I have him in the car, mint on box as well. So, uh, what's the end game with this GI Joe collection? I mean, what's the end game for anything, JP? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Like, are these going to be hanging on the wall of my garage in a few years? <laughs> I'm kind of torn. Um, what to do with, I don't know. It's a good question. Can you turn these around, make a profit? Well, no, that's not the point of collecting. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> yeah, but, it, though? But it's not collecting. I mean, so I have um, a few of these out of the box, but most are still in the box. I've never done that in my life. Uh-huh. I've never kept them in box. I'm always a get out. and But right now, I have no room. So it's kind of we're holding off until I have room. Holding off. Yeah. To display them. Yes. So where are they living? In a closet. <laughs> but in box. I'm just kind of hoarding my, my stash until then. It's 2020. Like, they don't have to do that. <laughs> like I have no <laughs> I have no room. Like every every available inch in the house is for my daughter. So I've like put things away. Uh, what does the wife think about this new Joe obsession? She's fine, you know. It's one of those I could be doing blows at a strip club kind of deal. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She goes, she's like, you have your G.I. Joes. I have my boxes of wine. <laughs> yeah. Everything's so, fine. Yeah. So it's nothing. It could be much worse. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I think so. Yeah. Keep it at a, the problem is when I start doing like, well, I can buy this for that and then flip it on eBay for that. But the flip never happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the problem lies. Wait. Yeah. Because you just, no one buys it or you don't flip it. I don't flip it. Because <laughs> I, I know for a fact you can sell that. I mean, right now on, on eBay, these uh, the, the bareness is going for triple digits. Sell it. Yeah, but I mean, it's the bareness. Think how much more uh, uh, Pimp Daddy Destros you could buy. You're right. I've thought about becoming uh, what, I, what I thought would never happen to me. There's a, a subculture of, of toy collectors called army builders. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sure you've heard the term before. And I'm almost I'm on the, on the edge. So what is becoming I mean, an army builder? What would be a definition? Uh, of the army. first, I mean, kind of the most well known would be like saying the old Star Wars line of toys, the old three and three quarter inch, uh-huh. uh, the stormtroopers. You get as many as humanly possible. <laughs> uh-huh. you're, you're literally building a, a figure army, right? And you see, you could do a Google search or just go on Instagram and see these army building collections. It's it's impressive to see a wave of, you know, Pimp fifty Daddy Destros. 50, well, no, but it has to be an army builder, like uh-huh. the the Cobra Trooper or a, okay. you know. A, a foot soldier from the Turtles. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, you could army build. Uh, there's a different term for that from instead of army building um, that escapes me right now, but you can do the collection of the same character, but the army building intrigues me. What would you take for your entire collection of new G.I. <laughs> Joes right now? Um, like, legitimately, like uh-huh. give them away for that or sell it for that? Um, probably four 400 for the entire, well, how many do you have? Mm-hmm. Three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, let's see. I'm going to name off, count for me while I think here visually. Okay. Snake Eyes. Mm-hmm. Duke. Yep. Destro. Uh huh. Pim Daddy Destro. Right. Gung Ho. Uh huh. Baroness. Good, good one. Uh, Cobra Commander. Cobra! Supreme Cobra Commander, which I, oh, I just pre ordered him a few days ago <laughs> on Hasbro Pulse. Long story. Okay. Uh, what, what are we at now? What's the number? Eight. I think that's it for the classified line. Okay. I could be wrong. I think that's it. I have some classic figures I'll sell you. And so those, I'm, I'm into those too. I'm doing classics and the anniversaries. Oh my goodness. The problem. I spent, yeah, some money on anniversaries. Are you going to be a completist with oh, the That's impossible. Impossible. Original? No, no, impossible. Even for the classifieds, I could. That's not so impossible because we're early on in the phase of the, the new the new uh, figures, but mm-hmm. there's some I don't want. I don't want Scarlet. I don't want uh, the different roadblocks. 
I don't want a, a beachhead. I don't want a barbecue. Yeah, but they have – so Hasbro, uh, the PulseCon, pretty much their version of the online uh, Comic-Con just happened a few days ago. And you can go on Hasbro.com, and as a PulseCon um, uh, exclusive member, you have the option to uh, get some stuff early on, day one of the con, the virtual con, or day two, the uh, the peasants such as myself that don't pay the extra premium membership get to pre-order stuff as well. So I was there at 11 a.m. getting that Supreme Commander <laughs> – <laughs> Supreme Cobra Commander. It's cool looking. Um, Only 40 bucks for him. That's not bad. Yeah. And if he's anything like the deluxe snake eyes they did earlier from Hasbro Pulse, we're looking at a gold mine. But I'm not going to flip it. I'm just going to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> You'll flip him eventually. Nah, we'll see. When they're not worth as much. When the market is dead. Yeah. And saturated. <laughs> yeah. So It's just a problem. In the course of doing... The show, mm-hmm. the Adam and JP show, podcast role, the show you're listening to now. Yeah. You've gone through several phases of collecting. True, yeah. Uh, do you mind if we take a second to hit mm. some of the highlights? Let's do it. Let's go down a memory Cur- lane. Currently, it's G.I. Joe's. Yeah. What <clears> would you say the last wave of collecting you did was? Mm, I know one in my head. I'm trying to think if there was one between that. Mad Balls is the next right. one I'm thinking exactly, of. Exactly, Mad Balls. Which are cheap. Yeah, they can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no? They are, yeah. I mean, they were the ones I was getting, uh, I think 10, 15 bucks a pop. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I miss that. I miss that, wow. mad, miss that mad ball grind. Seems like a G.I. Joe should be like four ninety nine. In 1985, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But these are bigger than those figures, right? Yeah, they're six inches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll bring it in. I'll bring my pimp daddy out for you later. All right. I'll show you my six inch pimp daddy. So, is there anything between Mad Balls and GI Joe's? I don't think so. Before Mad Balls, so I had a long time of the the, the video games. Right, that was a big one there. We did fidget spinners for a minute. <laughs> I was collecting. I had like mm-hmm. three of them. <laughs> <laughs> and comics are always a thing. I Remember when you tried to get me to buy in early on fidget spinners? <laughs> yeah, I was going to people's front doors, <laughs> the porch pickup of the fidget spinners. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but I went to. Uh, I still do comics. Still have my boxes. Yeah, I mean. I get comics every now and then. Yeah. I don't. I think, do I have a fidget spinner in here? I think I do. <laughs> Probably. Maybe I don't. Uh, but yeah, comics are still legit. Yeah. Too legit to quit? Hey, hey. I'll look it up later. It's somewhere in there. That was the fill time one. I just stabbed myself with a mechanical pencil. Oh, nice. It was worth it. It's lead poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> what about, have you, throughout the years, have you had any collections at all like that? You've had, you had comics uh, for a bit? Um... Hmm. Did you have, we've spoken before on Collection Connection, but your G.I. Joe history, not so much there? You had a few? Had a few. Did you have quite a bit well, of we the Lennard? <laughs> I had some Len- Hey, don't bash Lennard. Mm-hmm. I had it. Uh, we were poor. Yeah. So uh, I would get a few. Like, I would get like a couple of figures at Christmas, and then I would have friends that would get, you know, whatever that battleship was. The USS. Flag. Flag. Mm-hmm. I remember when my friend got that for Christmas. Yeah. What'd you get? <laughs> What's the <laughs> shipwreck with the parrot? <laughs> and a broken his tank. <laughs> yeah. <And a> broken his <laughs> tank. No, I feel you though. Like I I thought and I had a few. I would say, I mean, still over time almost ten G.I. Joe's, but my collection of air quote G.I. Joe's was huge. And as I as an adult I went back, I'm like, wait a damn minute. Mm-hmm. He say Lenard on them. <laughs> it was the ripoffs. I had no idea. Oh yeah, I mean, I had uh, SWAT figures. I got GoBotted. <laughs> you did get got the old GoBot. I got GoBotted too. Did you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the um, what was the movie with Chuck Norris where it was like the special missions force? Delta Force. Delta Force. There was a line. It wasn't based off the film. It was there was a generic army set called Delta Force. Wow. I had some Delta Force figures. Nice. I will say, though, the Delta Force helicopter was pretty cool uh-huh. because it came with a um, grappling hook. Oh, yeah? That actually had, it wasn't rope, it was yeah. string, but, you know, there was a yeah. grappling hook. That's pretty fancy. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have a lot of G.I. Joe's. I had a few. Now, the comics, I collected the comics. Yeah, you were more time. into that. I was more into the comics. I've read a few. I've never honestly owned a G.I. Joe comic. I started collecting... G.I. Joe comics with the death of Storm Shadow. Oh, that happened? Yeah. They killed how, off Storm Shadow. How did he die? Baroness. Really? Yeah. 
because Storm Shadow was starting to lean towards helping the Jews. Really? Baroness finds out. Well, Cobra Commander finds out. Mm-hmm. Sends Baroness to kill Storm wow. Shadow. Wow. Have I told you that currently, like 24 7 365, the Hasbro YouTube channel is the old Real American Hero cartoon streaming constantly? Really? Right now, if you go on the Hasbro YouTube right now, the G.I. Joe cartoon all the time. Dun, 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 mm-hmm. dun, dun. It's, it's, it does not hold up so well. I've been watching quite a bit as I'm eating my late dinners. Opening my Pimp Daddy Destros. <laughs> well, I had. <laughs> I had some fav- favorite episodes mm-hmm. uh, that I still remember. Countdown for uh, Zartan. Oh, yeah. Zartan just got uh, announced at, at PulseCon as the new wave. He has a figure coming out. What about uh, Zartan's crew? No, like the, the Dreadnought? Or like Dreadnoughts, the, yeah. yeah. No, not so much. Is it Dreadnoughts or Dreadlocks? Nox. Nox. <laughs> Dreadlocks? The, the Nox. Okay. Uh, he has some color changing, the mask change. What about Tomax and Zaymont? I want them. That would I would eat that forty dollar two pack up. Yeah, but not yet. That's um, the only one. Uh, I've done a little repair on my Tomax and Zaymont. My originals, their their rubber band mm-hmm. popped, and so I've done some repairs on them. <laughs> I'm that guy. That's why I want to wear sweatpants. Is this what happened to me? Yes. I mean, like in my theoretical basement repairing my GI Joe. <laughs> I think we've been heading down this road for quite some time. <laughs> I think we've, I mean, <laughs> you and I have had several conversations <laughs> about sweatpants. You know, you I, I refuse to wear comfort. sweatpants. Why do you, even at home, you don't, do you? Well, I mean, I wear sweatpants to You go like, like from jeans to jogging. To just, you wear like jeans to butt naked when you sleep. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah. I wear jeans all day. See, I'm all about, I have I also a, wear my shoes all I, day. I have a, are you serious? Yeah. Wow. So you have a few, I have a few like trendy joggers. We don't call them sweatpants. We call them joggers. A nice tapered leg, maybe a ribbed knee. Uh huh. <laughs> Just a kind of a tree, you know, in case the house caught on fire. I have some joggers. Okay, yeah. That I wear. Yeah. When I jog. <laughs> it's unfair that the females of the world can wear their their yoga pants everywhere. You can wear yoga pants. <laughs> I could. I. I could. I dare you <laughs> to find Man. the tightest. Yoga pants, you could <laughs> put those on. That would just look like vacuum sealed bag of raisins. That would not be good. <laughs> Go find your old uh, uh, avant garde Hulk. Yeah, my morph suit. Morph suit. Yeah, just for that. That's why I always wore pants with it to um, cover the areas. The ultimate comfort. <laughs> it was technically you're not naked. That's true. That's true. Uh, but I think if they can wear their yoga pants, I can wear my joggers. I mean. Absolutely. Aren't yoga pants acceptable in public? But what does that say about you? That I enjoy comfort. I've worked a long, hard life. It's time to take it easy. And <laughs> you you thrown in the towel. Or that I, I repair G.I. Joe's in my spare time. <laughs> one, of <those> two. <laughs> one of those two options. I like comfort or I repair G.I. Joe's. Oh, no. Have you got to see my home action? Say not. <laughs> Hold on, I found it in the fold of my I gotta make it pants. back home for my pre order. <laughs> Damn it, that's true. I actually had to make it home in time for it. Oh man. <laughs> like doing super nerdy stuff is nothing new for us. That's true. Yeah, that's I true. Mean, that's a good point. I mean remember dressing as uh <laughs> uh, uh Deddy Kruger? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was that after Tony Starch? That was after Tony Starch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I miss Dragon Con. Can I say that? Well, you should. You haven't been in like six years. <laughs> That's true. I miss it though. I haven't been the last. Well, there there wasn't one this year, and I didn't go last year, so I miss it too. Yeah, this is going to be the comeback. This is supposed to be the big comeback year. Mm-hmm. Thanks, twenty twenty. That's the way it works. <laughs> but I think you should. Before we leave the topic, you should jump in the GI Joe train with me. No, it's fun. Not happening. Uh, it's fun. Because here's the thing: I can I'm I cannot commit to that. There's no commitment. There is a commitment to it. This is not it. like a, a monthly there membership. A com- yeah. If no. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to start collecting these, then you're committing to at least collecting a certain number of them. <sighs> what happens is I buy one and what, and then lose interest. That is what happens. So I do raffles now. I told you about my raffles. <laughs> That's how I want my Cobra Commander, the original Cobra Commander, and my Gung Ho. Do we need- I, sh- I showed you a picture of my Gung Ho, right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> You know, we could do more episodes a week if you want. <laughs> it's fun. You got the but time. They, it's it's so it's it's pretty addictive. There are the, their Facebook groups out there, like raffle groups. They have them for all things, but I join the toy ones. And so, as an example, say there are twenty spots, right? And you pay five bucks per spot in the raffle. You get as many spots as you want. 
and you get a spot for it. You pay your money to the person running the raffle, and they randomly go live in the in the group once it's all paid up. They spin an actual virtual wheel. There's a website. You randomly put your names in there. It spins it randomly. And the last person remaining wins an item. Yeah. And that's how you won Gung Ho. That's a, yeah, and Cobra Commander. <laughs> but you still have to pay for them. Yeah, I spent 16 bucks on two of them, which if they were retail, it'd be 20 bucks a piece. And so very, you're up. Yeah, but they're very, very, very tough to find. So it'd be more than that. Yeah. So why'd you flip them? Well, I mean, they're kind of cool. <laughs> dun, 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 and it was that was my first raffle. Yeah. And you're pretty excited. No, Does it, everybody win something? No, no, no. You have to win. Is it like no, a, I'm saying that wasn't my first raffle. Oh, I, it wasn't. A, no, it wasn't. Oh. I did a view before. So it's not like a kinder- That's the worst when you put some money down and nothing happens. Like I just wasted twenty bucks. Oh. Yeah. I want to hear more about that story. It's yeah. It's like blackjack. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so but I mean, I finally won and they shipped from Singapore. <laughs> Got those a few days ago. I meant to bring the Singapore newspaper. He wrapped it in. Oh wow! Very good job, though. Wow, it's legit. What? No, I'm just. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what was before uh, Mad Balls? Uh, like I said, games, comics, Pokemon like, Go. Yeah, but it, the world loved that. It's not really a collection. <laughs> you uh, trying to collect something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to catch them all. That's true. That's true. Nothing big, really. I feel like the Mad Balls kind of reignited my physical. Item collecting thing. Well, you collected wrestling figures for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't everyone? No. I mean, again, <laughs> I had a couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did movie maniacs before that, like oh, the yeah, yeah, the, uh, the horror icons. Still have a lot of those. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. It's been throughout the years. I've done a few. Can't, I just have random things that I'll mm-hmm. just pick up here and there. Like I have some um, hero figures. Yeah. Some superhero figures, but I don't have a collection. Oh, that's not true. Uh, I tried very hard to get all the super friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you tried to do all the, uh, the the MCU movies. Yes. Oh, yeah, which is pretty easy to do. Yeah. And I have them all up to a certain point. So, look, I do collect something. There you go. But, again, I haven't bought one in a long time, <laughs> and I fell behind. Why is that? What is it, what is it your... Uh not fear, but your uh, fear of commitment, disdain towards uh, towards collections. What is that? I don't have a disdain. I, I'm very fascinated by people collecting things mm-hmm. and collections in general, and love looking at collections. I just don't have it within myself to commit to. You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Our friend Cameron has a fantastic toy collection. When you say so, yeah, there's no commitment there for him. That seems like a huge. Commitment. <laughs> he was so committed, he handmade <laughs> shelving. Yeah. To show off his collection. Yeah, but that's fantastic. That's a good commitment to have. I mean, just look around. Mm-hmm. There's no rhyme of re- reason <laughs> to the things that I have. Hey, you see this Grand Theft Auto collector's box here? I do this see that. This is when I was going to get the collector's items of video games. Oh, yeah. I have two. Okay. This one and Injustice. I forgot, yeah. Yeah, because it was the pre-orders. Mm-hmm. And then you could order the collector's. So, yeah. Oh, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. This will be something I can get into. And you and I even went yeah. and got the pre-orders on nights of release. Yeah. I think that's where I got this one, right? I think so, yeah. Or was it Injustice we went for? Maybe. Regardless, yeah. I have two. Right. Um, pop figures. Uh-huh. I enjoy them. Yeah. We have a lot, but not really. Not I don't have worth. like all the Marvel pop figures. Uh-huh. Or, they're just random. Hey, Adam gave me Thanos. <laughs> holiday Thanos. Hey. And a holiday sweater. I have Ash from Evil Dead. Yeah. It's just very random. Mm-hmm. We do have some wrestling figures here, but That's you gave true. me, if you give it to me, it becomes part of my collection. I see a glow in the dark skull face mad ball there. That's right. You give me that. Yeah. You give me Bret Hart. Right. That's your Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have a point. Right next to King Kennedy. And the pickles. And the pickles. You're right, though. I see some hanging uh, Captain America, Spider Man. Yep. Doc Brown. Yeah. Is you that would Hawkeye? think. <laughs> that is a Hawkeye. Yeah. <laughs> You would think if there was one thing I would collect, it would be Back to the Future figures, right? That or Ghostbusters, yeah. Right. I have Doc Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not much. I'm so- And behind you is a Ghostbusters figure. Okay, there we go. Yeah. I have Ernie Hudson. <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Never thought about it. It's just kind of, it's a, it's a mishmash. It's an amalgam of different things. Hmm. Yeah. But it works. It's your thing. I guess. Your thing is no thing. I have the uh, holy trinity of DC uh, characters. True. Uh, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. 
That was an easy collection to complete. <laughs> I can see that. Because there were three. Yeah. Uh, I see a, a Fallout Nuka Cola poster here. Right. It's been a few weeks now. We should probably talk about the uh, the acquisition oh, of Bethesda goodness. to the Microsoft Studios. What's your take on that? Well, as long as I get Fallout on the PlayStation. I mean, go Xbox. You were a 360 no, guy. What's the problem? I, I can't go back. What's the problem? I can't. You were a 360 lover. Look at the, the Grand Theft Auto V. You played Grand Theft Auto V on the 360 first. But it's so, much, something. it's so much more fun on the PS4. <laughs> If you want your Bethesda games, it has to be this way. No, it doesn't. And the future will be. No, because they'll, they'll still release them on PC. Are you going to be a PC gamer now? No. <laughs> not saying that at all. But I'm saying if Bethesda yeah. releases to PC, then they're going to release PS4, even if Microsoft owns them. We'll see. Or they're going to make it only for uh, PC games, like uh, no uh, Mac gamers can play Bethesda yeah, games? Yeah, I think so. That's no. the thing. That's the thing. They'll release it to streaming services. Where anybody uh, can play. I don't know. I mean, what's the point of buying it if you're not exclusive? Why are you buying that, that franchise or the company? Because there's more money in making it non-exclusive. That's true. Yeah, it's true. But, I mean, you have a – it's kind of a double-edged sword. Like, you have your own console. I don't know. It's, it's, time will tell. They haven't said – what's weird about that is people have asked that straight up, and they won't give the answer, which mm. is weird both ways. Like, I think no matter what the answer is, it's bad – to not answer that answer. Is that Halo movie still coming out? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. Yeah. Uh, did E3 happen this year? Virtually kind of, yeah. Yeah, a virtual yeah. E3? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No big news? Not, not really. That was... Well, PS5. Yeah, the new console's coming out. It was that year for it. Mm. I'm so curious. Are you going PS5, I'd assume? Well, probably not this year. You're not going to? But eventually, yes. Are you going disc or discless? I like the hard media. Really? Mm hmm I used to. Of course, I used to. But yeah. as time goes on, I haven't bought a physical copy of a game in two or three years. Of course, I'm playing a lot of Fortnite, and there's no disc with Fortnite. That's true. That's true. But it is a weekly update that takes forever yeah. over Wi-Fi. It's a struggle. Struggle's mm -hmm. real. <laughs> Do you uh, Fortnite celebrating their third, uh, third birthday right now. Really? Mm hmm Look at that. Yep. There's all sorts of birthday challenges. <laughs> There's birthday cake. I should try it again one one day, maybe. You should play with me. Yeah. I'm almost to uh, level 100 now. Dang. You should hop on Rocket, Rocket League. is free to play now, you know. Hmm. Yeah? Hmm. Let's say how much I just passed my... Take a, a, a serious guess how many hours I've put in that game. Seri like, serious guess. 12,000. I said serious. <laughs> 1,600. Uh, 850. Not okay. bad. That's, that's a lot of time, though. No, oh, I said twice as many. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just passed my 850, 850th hour. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just excited. But it's uh, it's owned by Epic, which is who makes Fortnite, of course. And so they've taken, taken on the uh, the free-to-play model as well. So it's free, yeah, but you can... But here's the thing. Uh -huh. And here's what I really enjoy about Fortnite, is the challenges that you only get if you buy the Battle Pass. Mm -hmm. That's happening now as well. So I did buy the Battle Pass, so I can play through the Battle Pass challenges. Mm-hmm. And now I'm playing as Tony Stark. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's a thing now with uh, yeah the new Rocket League. The yeah, whole, uh, they call it a Rocket Pass, I believe, maybe Battle Pass. Yeah, but it's all that epic stuff. That's almost the way uh, the the future of gaming is. It's kind of sad to me. I'm fully understandable that I'm understanding that a game that comes out now and costs 100 million dollars to make can't cost the same as a game that cost two million. 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. Were there games 20 years ago they spent $2 million on making? Yeah, I mean, oh, you mean that much? Yeah. Think less? Yeah, oh, yeah, I think so. Really? 20 years ago, that's the late, yeah, it's, that's 2000. Oh, yeah, for sure. You think there was, like, name a game you think they spent $2 million to make. In the year 2000? In the year 2000. Tons, I'm sure. Call of Duty? Yeah. You think $2 million in development for Call of Duty? Are you thinking more or less? I'm confused. I'm thinking less. No, what? no, no, no. I mean, they were, you know, even a game like Madden that comes out yearly, you have a, a crew of 50, 60 people on that. That's true. There's a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, For sure. Maybe I'll try Rocket League. Yeah? If you'll come back to Fortnite. <sighs> we'll see. Stark we'll Industries is in Fortnite now. <laughs> that is crazy. Like you land, you can land at Stark Industries. That's crazy. And take on Iron Man. <laughs> And if you you don't you don't eliminate you or you don't kill, you eliminate. 
So if you eliminate Iron Man, you can mm-hmm. get his gauntlets. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And his wasn't Thanos there for a bit? Pew-pews. Was he still there? Thanos, uh, no. Oh, oh, I don't know. I mean, maybe not in the season. I'm not this season. That's what. So what does Doctor Doom is? What does a season mean? I don't get that in Fortnite now. It used to be just the game you play it, and that was it. Now there's a season. Well, there's, there's a season and... with a storyline and a theme. Weird. And right now it's it's the coming of a. Uh, Galactus. Are you serious? Yeah. You're serious. Absolutely. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay. Because Galactus was has, is teased. You haven't seen him yet, and so basically Galactus is coming, and so these Marvel characters are gathered together to take on Galactus when he gets here eventually. And I got to tell you, it's pretty cool some of the stuff they do because in the first week, uh, Stark Industries were laying these things that nobody knew what they were around the map. And you could see that they were, you know, pointing to the sky and there was, you know, rays or something coming out of them. And then the second week, those rays turned to a circle. And then after that third week update, I think, um, one of the uh, one of the areas in the map was gone, mm-hmm. Frenzy Farms. And basically, it was this round uh, piece of earth with Stark Industries on it. Really? So basically, Stark Industries brought upstate New York into oh. the map. And so it, uh, and it just, it's like it plopped right down where Frenzy huh. Farms were. But yeah, Galactus is ultimately the end of this. Really? Mm-hmm. I'll download it tonight. You, yeah. said, you said the G word. Galactus. <laughs> hey, when you download it and you yeah. see the, um, you see like the load screen, it's Galactus is on the load screen. Wow. Mm-hmm. It told me that. Yeah, it's a Silver Surfer mm-hmm. uh, was one of the first characters to make an appearance in this season. Really? Mm-hmm. That's so weird. He hasn't been part of the story yet. But now, there is this was... optional? Like people that play Fortnite, what if you don't like Marvel? You're just kind of screwed? Yeah, right now you are. Weird. I didn't, I didn't know it was that dominant in Fortnite right now. Yeah. I thought it was at most like a DLC scan you'd get. That's it. No, 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 no. Two areas on the map right now. Well, there's there's many areas that are Marvel themed, but two big areas now is upstate New York with Stark Industries, and then there's Doom's Domain. Doom's bo- Domain was the first one. And you could defeat Dr. Doom. And So how do you apply? And that's just like a, an NPC, like a computer character? Yeah. Because in my head, Fortnite's you against other people trying to outlast. Well, that's when you say you can play against... Dr. Doom, I'm confused. Imagine trying to go defeat Dr. Doom, get his stuff, while other characters are trying to kill you. That's what it is. Hmm. So you're fighting the other characters, and you're also trying to defeat Doom or defeat Iron Man so you can get the good loot. Because anytime I lose, and I always, I usually finish in the top five. I had really? another I had another win since the last time. We really? Were. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I have four wins now. Huh. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious. Proud of myself. You know they have some fantastic Fortnite action figures. They're I've really seen, well done. I've seen them. Really? Some yeah. McFarlands even. Yeah, you should do it. I won't be. <laughs> I like to play the game. That's yeah. it. There's even what's his name, Banana Man. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, there's some characters. Yeah. That when I see them, like a tomato guy too. Uh, you know, there's a lot. There's a gingerbread man. There's yeah. a banana man. Big pink bear, I guess. Is it pink bear? The pink bear. I think I haven't seen many pink bears, but yeah. it's. I, I know what you're talking about. What's your character? What do you do? Fish stick. Which one is that? It's fish. He's a fish? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, as now, you... Do you pay for that? Uh, fish stick I paid for. Yeah. yeah. Because I wanted a character that was different. <laughs> it's the only one I bought. But I bought the Battle Pass, so now I also have Thor. Uh, I see Fortnite S- fish stick. Storm. <laughs> I have uh, Thor, Storm, uh, Mystique, <laughs> uh, Tony Stark... Uh, gr- uh, Groot. Really? Yeah. And your backpack is Rocket. Wow! I'm looking at all these. Oh, this is this is something. Yeah, hmm. it's really cool. Hmm. I enjoy it. I'll try. I'll download it tonight. Uh, so before we get into Adam's Ghost, yeah, because this is the Halloween season, uh, we got to do something a little more Halloween to get into the. Uh... Oh yeah. So Halloween candy. What's your favorite? <laughs> 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 what is a Halloween costume you remember hating as a kid? Did you that, ever have a Halloween? I wore myself? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'm usually a hater of face paints. Uh huh. I feel like I was a, a, a vampire quite a few years. <laughs> and just the white paint. I just not a, not a, I'm, I've always been a big sweater, big chubby sweater. Yeah. <laughs> and so face paint. paint. Yeah, face paint's not a good combo. Face paint and a sweater. Oh. Uh, no, yeah. You I, weren't I, wearing a sweater. I myself am a sweater. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
face paint and a big sweater. I hate it. It's my least favorite costume. So nothing specific, but any face paint. What are you supposed to be, Grimace? <laughs> big what, purple sweater. <laughs> what about you? Do you have any any uh, uh, any costumes you hate? I was generic goblin quite a bit. Goblin? Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> ghost, goblin, whatever hey, you want to call it. What is this, a Capcom game? And you're a ghoul, a ghost, a ghost, and goblin? <laughs> Random ghoul. <laughs> what does it even mean? I was, it was face paint. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a redneck zombie's zombie. <laughs> Those are, t- you know, like almost the kiss face paint, just black or white with black circles in your eyes? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. And maybe a sheet. <laughs> Funny. Um, I remember, huh, like, I remember, like, having costumes that were those um, plastic costumes. The Ben Coopers. I don't even think they were Ben Coopers. I think it was after that. <laughs> the knock. You had the knockoff Ben Coopers. Probably the Jim Hoopers. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, like, a lot of times it would be the character. <laughs> Say it was like a Dukes of Hazard, right? Mm-hmm. So it was a plastic suit. It sounds like a Ben Cooper. With like the Dukes of Hazard logo on the front. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe like a Bo Duke mask. <laughs> yeah. And that's your Dukes of Hazard costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a costume. <laughs> it's an advertisement. <laughs> I remember some of those. Yeah. I remember... Um, I would just bend over a squat and just rip the ass right out of those things. Well, I remember. Yeah. Was, I had a Superman costume mm-hmm. once. Ripped the legs. Yeah. Before Halloween. Oof. So guess who got to go trick-or-treating with duct tape all over their costume? Yep. I was that kid. (laughs) Jeez. Excuse me. (laughs) Trick-or-treat. Yeah, the old Ben Coopers. What are you supposed to be, Bizarro? (laughs) Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They're all crypt up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, any face paint. I'm not a face paint fan. Unless it's Captain Spaulding. It has to be done. Like good face paint. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like if Brooklyn does your face paint, you're in good shape. She's done mine. She did. Remember I did... Uh, Undead Nightmare Cowboy for right. your Halloween? Yeah. That was 10 years ago now, by the way. Mm-hmm. Well, none. No, that was, was 2010. It was 2011, right? Mm-mm. I thought it was because we were living here. Mm-mm, that was right before you got here. Was it? Yeah. Oh, wow. That was my first year at the old the house here, like first year in this town. Wow. Weird, huh? My first year in this town. <laughs> it was, though. Yeah. I still got that costume. Really? Yeah. Bring it out. Okay. I saw that leather face, of course. It's the I bring it out every year. Yeah. That or werewolf, which I did last year. Remember that werewolf mask that was so small? Yeah. My <laughs> eyes were popping out like Brian Peppers. I forgot we went to a <laughs> Halloween party last year. Yeah. Because I was doing the party trick. Oh yeah. You're right. <laughs> All night. <laughs> it's true. As time went on, my uh my my fur my hands came off, the stick came off. And uh. so I put that as a mohawk as my Mr. T. Do you remember that? I do remember that. As the night went on, my werewolf evolved into a Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so we're going to do some Adam's Ghost? Let's do it, yeah. All right, let's hear it. Where are we going? Iowa. <laughs> oh, wow. That's where we're going tonight. The ghost of the straw pole. <clears throat> let's go to, specifically, Iowa City, Iowa. <laughs> a place called Slater Hall, even more specifically, Floor one of Slater Hall in Iowa City, like Iowa. Saved by the Bell, Slater? Yeah, that's it. Legend has it that in the 1800s, a man they called the Fat Penguin Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Roamed the vicinity looking for young babies whose brains he liked to feast on. Oh, like some good baby, baby brains. Legend has it. The legend has it that the fat penguin man has been reincarnated into a fat... President of the United States? Into a fat first floor RA. What is an RA? Resident advisor? What does that mean? Like, um... I've never... Student advisor? Okay. Uh, now it says she. She roams the halls of Slater looking for innocent young students to eat now. Slater Hall is very dangerous. Beware the waddler. Wait, hang on a second. It's called the Waddler now. Um, do you feel like this might be someone making fun of an RA at their school? <laughs> it could be. It could be. It says, beware the Waddler. It's probably... <laughs> I'm sure some kids at what university is this? And uh, I just said Slater Hall in Iowa City. Not sure. I'm sure. Well, yeah, they don't want to be too. <laughs> so there's probably wow. an RA yeah. that these kids called the Waddler. And right. they went... <laughs> 
they sent you this yeah. story. Right, yeah, my people. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> Bingo, man. Let's stick <laughs> with uh, Lake City, Iowa. We're going to the Rainbow Bridge here. Why not? There are so many. A few miles south of Lake City, there's an old bowstring bridge which is blocked off from traffic and cannot be driven on. Now, if you walk out on the bridge at midnight, you lay an unopened, specifically, Here we go. Here we go. An unopened candy bar on the middle of the bridge and go back off the bridge. You wait for five minutes in the dark. When you go back for it, the wrapper will be unopened and intact, but the chocolate bar, it's gone. Believe it. At the Rainbow Bridge in Lake City, Iowa. Or not. October 2003 update. <laughs> Visitors to our website tried this and it does not work. <laughs> really? It's hard to believe. <laughs> the, the, the waddler didn't show up. <laughs> uh, let's go to Lawrence County. Uh, out in the middle of the country, you'll go up a hill on a gravel road. Mm-hmm. On top of that hill, you'll see an old, rundown, white, abandoned house. To your left, pushed back in the corner of a lot of trees, you'll see a small cemetery. No one has been buried there for years. As you walk into the graveyard, you'll see to your left three graves with the same last name. <laughs> Legend has Waiting it. Waiting for the punchline. Legend has it that the three graves are from three girls that lived in the house a long time ago until their father sadly killed them. Some people went into the house and found a bunch of old toys and stuffed animals to this day. Gusts of cold wind will blow as soon as you step out of your car, and many voices have been heard inside the small round cemetery in Lawrence, Iowa. Why did the father kill them? Do we know? I don't know. Let's look up the story. But it was sad. sad it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how about the Riverside Cemetery in Marshalltown, Iowa? Well, it's quiet now <laughs> in Marshalltown. There is a chair made from concrete. It looks like it is made of wood, but it's <laughs> that made makes of. No sense. But it's, Made of concrete. And supposedly, if you sit in it, you will die within one year. <laughs> you don't believe this? <laughs> what? You don't believe this wooden concrete chair in Iowa? Wait. <laughs> well, it's like a, yeah. Do we have any data to back this up? I mean, we can go check it out. Uh, rumor has it that there are some people who died very normal deaths, sat in the chair a month or two before that death. An April 2004 update. This is my final, or my favorite Final Destination movie. Yeah. <laughs> final Destination. Wooden, the chair. Con- wooden concrete chair. Yeah. Uh, April 2004 update. A visitor to our website reported, or our, our files here, reported the chair is not there anymore. But in fact, it is there as uh, November 28th of 2004. It's in the older part of the cemetery. If you look for it hard enough, you can find it. But don't sit in it. At the Riverside Cemetery in Marshalltown, Iowa. The <laughs> chair made from concrete that looks like wood. What's more, what's scarier to you? The, the waddler, the big fat penguin man, or the, the chair made of wood concrete that can kill you? You, I mean, if you went there and saw it, you wouldn't sit in it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't sit in it. Why not? Because the story says you'll die. But it's made up. That'd be a terrible year afterwards. Every true? single thing, I'd be like, whoa, I can't eat that pickle. It's going to kill me. But it's, <laughs> it's not true. You don't think so? Uh-uh. Uh, let's go to the uh, the Blue Angel at the Greenwood Cemetery in Muscatine, Iowa. <laughs> I love this name. <laughs> uh, there's a statue in this Greenwood Cemetery in Iowa who used to hold a rose, and if the person looking at the angel... <laughs> while you're looking at this angel, if the angel drops the rose, you're doomed to death. Wait. What's it? Yeah. So do you have to give the angel the rose? I think she's always holding it. So this is like some sort of <laughs> demonic bachelorette? Eventually, some people cut off her hand so she wouldn't be able to hurt anyone anymore and <laughs> never hold a rose. But at nighttime, her hand sometimes is still there. You killed my mama. Glowing in the night, holding the rose that she might drop on you. When approaching the angel, you'll see the sky turn blood red, and when you look at the trees... Because the angel is set back all by itself in a cove, the short side of the trees will be swaying and the tall side will not. Whatever that means. This seems very specific. The Greenwood Cemetery in Muscatine, Iowa. Mm. 
This is deep. March 2007 update. Cemetery Angel, I would like to give you a rose. <laughs> the Blue Angel, as they called her. Blue Angel, sorry. Is made of an ebony white gypsum, whatever that is. And the sides of the mausoleum in which she is housed are two cobalt blue stained glass windows, one to the east and one to the west, in case you're curious. Each morning as the new dawn emerges and each night as the day ends, the sun shines through the windows, bathing her in a luminescent glow, <laughs> turning her white figure blue. Hence the name. And during the 1950s, stories of the Blue Angel were all of a benevolent nature. She was the protector, the guardian angel of the cemetery, protecting all within from any vandals or wrongdoers. It is very sad the current stories of any evil associated with her. But now she's pissed. <laughs> the Blue Angel. So I assume what happened the first part there, we got the story from some kids. Uh, the second half comes in. It's a person that may work the grounds. Right. Like, you dumb kids. Leave my angel alone. <laughs> That's uh, my blue angel. Uh, well, let's go to Nevada. I, I love you, blue angel. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start wrapping up with some Nevada, Iowa. It's a place. Okay. Uh, an old store country home. Mm. Whatever that means. An old store? Yeah, an old store country home. Uh, the old store country home is said to be haunted and it's now closed down. Uh, for 15 years. They say if you drive by it at nighttime, you can see glows like a light is, is on in the kitchen. <laughs> it is condemned now with no trespassing signs all throughout the house. It was an asylum at first where people with mental illnesses lived. They say you can hear moans and cries and the like. <laughs> it has been said that some teenagers went to it. Uh, teenagers did and went to it one night at midnight and one of them got stuck, struck, on the head by a piece of falling debris. Nope. Like someone was jumping on the floor above them to make it fall down. Mm, that's creepy. Yeah. Uh, it was torn down in 2007, but you can still go to the area and uh, witness those lights as if the light is still on in the house, but there's no house for the light to be happening. The Think about that. Every light in the oh, house is on. <laughs> in the backyard, bright as a crack of dawn. That raises an interesting question, though. If these, these are apparitions, if you're seeing uh, you know, haunted electricity from the past in the house, even if the house is gone, the where the electricity would stand is still there, right? Or there's just a light on? Would you taunt the waddler while holding a chocolate candy bar in your concrete chair? Would you do it? In Iowa. These waiting, are all Iowa ghost stories. Waiting for my blue angel. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much the stuff we have for Iowa. Dear blue angel, please come <laughs> save me. I have sat in the concrete chair made of wood. <laughs> and I stole the bridge gremlins candy bar. <laughs> hey, I want to play something for you. Yeah. Uh, before we go. Okay. So um, in my search to find fresh, creepy uh, audio for this year this is the uh this is the first entry i have and i think what i'm gonna let you do is just uh, let you play it because uh behind the scenes we stopped uh -huh. and then i've got adam hooked up you're gonna play it and then we'll talk about what you're actually listening to because to me the audio of this is super creepy there's a little um uh Little text here in front. Should I read that for you? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, it says during a 1987 broadcast of Doctor Who on Chicago PBS affiliate WTTW, a mysterious person wearing a Max Headroom mask <clears throat> broke in and broadcasted one of the strangest pirated television occurrences in Chicago. To this day, the hijacker remains at large. So the, the text tells us. And this is what it sounded like. The transmission was heavily distorted, and many people cannot make out what he is saying. That is stupid. You should talk often with the old ones of your tribe. That is the only way to learn. I'll get you a hot drink, man. This is Doctor Who. Oh, 
Wow. As long as I can tell a massive electric shot. Weird. Guys. Now it's back to Dr. Yeah, Boo. Yeah. So. Weird. Explain to me what you just watched. So I, I guess I'd never seen that. I thought I had, and I've seen that on countdowns, but I've never seen the actual video. Um, wow. It was clearly like someone. It was all pre recorded. Yeah. This could not have been done live. Right. So someone pre recorded this. Yeah. And I think that was the second one that night. Really? I think they broke into actual WGN at the uh, before going over to the PBS station. Yeah. Because I believe there were two in Chicago that night. Really? And it's exactly what you said it was. Like somebody pirated and took over this. It was clearly like, uh, yeah, like homemade stuff. Yeah. Like the backdrop was kind of spinning and it was totally. But it was yeah. very like Max Hedron. Right. Yeah. 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 And then he says, catch the wave. Yeah. Which I think. Yeah, this video here, it's all subtitles. You, they have the oh, words of what he's saying. So yeah. yeah. So at the end, he says, I just made a giant masterpiece for all my world's greatest newspaper nerds. Right. Or something like that, which that's what WGN stands for, is uh, world's greatest newspaper. Uh, so there's some theory that this was done by maybe, maybe a. Um, a disgruntled ex WGN employee. Interesting. Yeah, and then there's some sh- shenanigans in there. Oh where, yeah, like is he he gets spanked right yeah, at the end? Is he pulls his pants down, and gets spanked? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at one point he uh, he holds he holds up what the uh, 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 lots of articles about this would call a marital aid. Uh huh. Yeah, in there. I mean, it's yeah. pretty it's pretty dirty. Yeah. That's yeah. Interesting. I mean, I'm reading the subtitles again. Uh, who's Chuck Swirsky? Who was that? Who's sportscaster over at WGN. Oh, it says catch the wave, screams and moans. Uh-huh. Pretty creepy. And then he, like the song that he... Um, Your love he, is fading, he says. The, the, and the, it's the theme song to Clutch Cargo. Yeah, what is that now? It was a cartoon. It was like one of those, stop, one of those first stop motion animation cartoons that used to be shown all the time on WGN. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here it is, the, the theme for Clutch Cargo. He's... Yeah. I stole CBS, he says. Uh-huh. That's so weird. My files. He moans, moans. Oh, my files. He just made a giant masterpiece. Hmm. What does that mean? My brother's wearing the other one. He puts on a glove. It's dirty, he says. And there's the they're coming to get me. He's getting spanked. So weird. That is creepy. Yeah. Wow. Very creepy. Yeah. And um, like I said, I think that was the second one that night. I think there was one. I think they actually busted into WGN at one point. Really? But it was real short. Really? And then I think they did that and then went over to, and see, here's the thing too. And not to get too, like, into broadcast stuff, but the theory is they were able to overtake the microwaves Mm -hmm. that, uh, because basically radio, TV, you know, it, it's sent through microwave from the source to the transmitter site and then sent up the tower. Well, both of these TV stations had their transmitter uh, receivers atop the same building. Mm-hmm. So the theory is they were able to take over the uh, microwave transmission. Weird. Mm-hmm. Huh. How, though? How is that possible? I mean, you can do it if you know the, uh, the right frequency to yeah. set it at. Wow, interesting. Yeah. That's, that's kind of creepy. I like it. Yeah. I'm a fan. So that's my first entry. There you go. Into 2020's <laughs> Creepy Audio. I liked it. Yeah. 
Yeah, watch the video if you can. The visuals are really nuts. Yeah, yeah. it's really crazy. Hmm. And at the time this was done, Max Headroom was very popular. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just to hear it. Yeah. It's just it's as creepy as um. Uh, what were those stations that we did? The uh, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. We'll get we'll get there. Number stations. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. The, yeah. So uh, there's no your problem. there's your dose of creepy audio for the I week. I like it. And Adam's ghost <laughs> and a lot yeah. of GI Joe talk. Right. Yeah. It feels like a show. That is. <laughs> you can check us out online. Uh, Facebook.com slash Adam and JP. As always on Twitter at Adam and JP as well. And send us an email. Adam and JP at gmail.com. That's true. And we will read it right here on the show. Yeah. Are we doing some? Uh, we'll see what we have. I don't want to spoil it. What? Well, some more Halloween stuff. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, yeah. We got yeah. plenty of Halloween. Oh yeah, tons, tons, tons. I'm just trying to think what we won't talk about. We, yet. We've just cracked the uh, the beginning yeah. of October. The egg has been cracked. Yeah. I'll bring some more GI Joes for you next week. I'll oh, that'd be show fun. you my new ones. You can see. Let me crack open my my pin daddy for you. Maybe we'll do some face painting. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we generic ghoul. <laughs> yeah, or vampire vampire sweater. <laughs> <laughs> this is my vampire sweater. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jay Patrick. That's Adam. You've been listening to the creepy sounds of Podcast World. <laughs>